Coming to you live from the JRE Tobacco Aladino Mobile Studios, it's the Cigar Pulpit. Hello everybody and welcome to another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm the Bishop of Burn Nick and with me by phone we have Noah Zelesnik. Now Noah... Is it, he, he's a listener. He's been on the show a couple times, at least once. Um, and, uh, you know, I uh, have welcomed him back because, which, by the way, how you doing, Noah? Oh, I'm, I'm great as always. It's uh, it's kind of a hard part of the year over here in Wisconsin, but uh, yeah, it's probably I'm hanging in there. Nasty cold. Are you outside? I am in the Aladino Mobile Studios Grand Marquis. Oh, okay. So you're borrowing the vehicle, okay? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, that's what you got to do. So I think I think it is currently 23 degrees. Oh, gross! So, All right. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you have me beat, but now I I have to check because I'm in the Aladino Mobile Studios of my ice tent, and currently it is 27 degrees here. Oh, but I only have I only have a one mile per hour wind from the east, so that Um, plays a big role. Yeah, it's not too windy here, and actually, like in about a month or so, twenty three is gonna seem fucking warm, balmy, right? (laughs) Yeah, because we'll we'll hit about twenty three, except it will be negative twenty three. Gross, gross. gross. Well, why don't we go ahead and get a cigar lit up? And so we are both smoking. I don't think we're smoking the same size, but we are both smoking the Charter Oak Maduro. I have the Rothschild. It is a four and a quarter by 50 featuring a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper, Sumatra binder, and Nicaraguan filler. And you have... I am doing the Toro of that same lovely cigar. Okay, then. So perfect. So we'll go ahead and... uh, Get these guys going here, and it's time to cut the cigar. And the official cutting is brought to you by Dan the Man Ponder over there at Riverman Cigar Company. And while Dan the Man, he uh, he took a little 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 trip down to Texas this weekend to uh, do some family time, and so um, he enjoyed a little warmer weather than than we have. Um, but uh, you know that's that's the that's the prerogative that uh, we all have, and you and I are both in twenty something degree temperatures right now so i guess who's the smart one and who was uh who's the dumb ones left behind but anyway dan the man ponder over there at riverman cigar company he's got a great selection of cigars in the humidor i know he brought a lot down with him on the trip because you know that's how uh how he rolls when he goes on these trips and uh you guys if you're going on trips as well if you've got hot i mean you all have holidays of some sort coming up you know, so uh, you need celebratory cigars. So why don't you swing on over to Riverman Cigar Company and check out what they got in the humidor. And if you're not in the St. Louis area, but you still want to support a brick and mortar, you can give them a call and they do mail order. So you can get those holiday cigars shipped to you right away. It's Riverman Cigar Company, Crestwood, Missouri. And with that, it's time we go ahead and cut the cigar. All righty. So you're testing out a new microphone, too. I'm impressed. Yeah, so it, I, I'm not exactly tech savvy, so if uh, this goes out at any point, I'm probably uh, not using it correctly. So. Oh, whatever. We'll deal. Yeah. We'll yeah. deal. You should have seen. And to uh, touch base earlier, I've been on the show actually uh, several times now. Well, no, I know, but like, um, <laughs> I mean, well, that's true. You have been on at least a couple times now that I think about it. Yeah. If you remember. Uh, the grand entrance is when uh, a former co-host of yours got drunk. On Drunker tequila. than shit on tequila. That's right. Yes. That was you. <laughs> that was me. Yeah, I was the devil on the shoulder. Then. <laughs> That's right. I remember that now. Okay. Yeah. I'll be honest. I oh, can't. Yeah. I can't keep track yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah, you've had a lot of you've had a lot of guests there, Mister Miller. It's been it's been a nice rotating. Uh, chair here the last few months so um but that's all right you know it is what it is but that's a good thing yeah i you know i think so it's a lot better than me doing it solo um those ones are those ones are rough thanks well i mean i appreciate the effort i feel for you no they're rough admittedly they're rough i i get done with it and i'm like oh that's not gonna be a good one you know 
And know. then ironically, those are the ones they, they don't do badly in terms of downloads. And then ones that I think should do really well, like the solo ones do better than those. And I'm like, what is up with this? Well, maybe it's like a car accident thing. Uh, maybe. Or maybe it, you know, since we are just counting downloads, maybe it's one of those things people download it figure out i'm going solo and they're like ah screw this and delete the you know, episode Maybe. then real quick i don't know. i do think uh, they are more appreciated than just doing a rewind i find well hell i only have six months of rewinds to call upon now so you know it's not like it's i can only... not like i can do that so did you uh you lost the first couple years in the divorce then uh i just feel like it um maybe uh Makes things cleaner for people who, you know, I, I don't want to confuse anybody. That's valid. That yeah, makes sense. yeah. Anyway, cold draw time on the Charter Oak uh, Maduro here. And uh, it's got a closed foot. So that's something to be mm-hmm. conscious of. Um, yes. I, I always worry about burning my shirt with the uh, yeah, Charter Oak. That is valid. Cause that dude, is valid. I will say the Charter Oak Habano is one of my, like, go-to driving cigars i smoke that like crazy in the car yeah they uh, honestly uh just a shout out to nick malillo i i think just about everything foundation puts out is solid Mm -hmm. honestly Mm -hmm. and yeah what he does with broadleaf and connecticut shade i think is just exemplary exemplary um uh, yeah i just i'm always torn or i'm always drawn to his stuff i think it's just phenomenal he does make good cigars. I I have not ventured into the upsetters as I don't really do infuse, but I haven't sure tried that are. either. Um, and I'll tell you the one that I, I, I think I've only smoked one of it so far, so I can't even give you a like, oh my gosh, it blew me away or anything like that, because you know it's 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 one of those things I only have smoked the one, so I don't want to like go too far with. It. Uh, is that what Olmec? Oh, Mac, yeah, that Egyptian. Yeah, like that thing. I mean, it's only, I think it came out this year. And mm. um, the problem is, it's just, it's super hard to find. Yeah. And, uh, and I think, I think they could, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think they could, it's broadly, right? I believe so. Boy, I so, hope that's, I mean, a, that, that looks like a ladybug. I've got a bug in the tent here crawling across the, the, Thing. It's it's literally clear on the other side of the tent from me, so I'm not worried about an attack just yet. But uh, it's I'm pretty, not a black widow, so that's good. I'm pretty it's sure close. it's a ladybug, but I was catching a nice shine and some red, and but I'm pretty sure I I think it's a ladybug. Okay. So I can live with God's a ladybug. Speak, I don't want to live with a black widow, dude. I got mm-hmm. something nailed me, like kind of on my neck, like right at my jawline. Um, like right before Thanksgiving and like on Thanksgiving. And then the few days there, I blew up like on that side. I mean, we're talking, you know what? Let's light the cigars and then I can get into this massive welt that I had on my <laughs> neck. So, uh, cold draw. I had uh, slight raisin sweetness and, um, kind of, uh, kind of a little bit of chocolatey note. Slight, very yeah. slight. Neither one was super strong. Yeah, I definitely get a lot of chocolate. I could, I could see the raisin. I don't know if you put that in my head, but I could see the raisin. Yeah, it was definitely sweet. Mm. So I went with that. Anyway, um, okay. So now that I have the cigar lit up, um, no, dude, like something just nailed me. So like for a week, I mean, this this side of my neck was all just puffed up and huge and you know i'm hitting it with i mean i'm taking a leave for the anti-inflammatory i'm hitting it with uh with um uh neosporin the triple antibiotic and i'm thinking to myself you know i probably should think about seeing somebody about this and right about the time i started like thinking okay if it's not better by tomorrow i mean that's when i start noticing it going down and uh hot compresses i was putting like warm hot you know compresses on it and everything but as it got down, I was able to look at it better. I had like four bites all clustered in one little spot, which explains why I blew up so much. Um, so something uh, nailed me in my beard, yeah. like right at my beard line. I'm thinking it might be the demon that you know you sleep with there with the night terrors. <sighs> Maybe I don't know. I mean, not to brag, but the demon typically only comes along. 
when I'm by myself. And, uh, you know, I'm just like, I mean, you know, whatever. <laughs> so. <laughs> so if something else swells up, another thing won't. <laughs> I mean, well, that doesn't. No, 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 no. Because I don't want to imply that. <laughs> Because, like, when Luke crashed here for, you know, Pulpit Fest, nobody screwed with my bed either. And I can tell you right then, nothing else was swelling up when Luke was here. And, um, <laughs> you know, like when my son's over, it's the same thing. Again, nothing else. Is, I want that for the record. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's just when there's another person, basically anybody else that can substantiate my claims, that's when the oh. demon, like, leaves me alone. So yes. doesn't want does not want witnesses. No, basically. no. Well, speaking of the afterlife, the reason mm, this segue. Hey, 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 this is why I'm a professional. So the reason that I've asked you to come on is because so let's review and reflect here for listeners that maybe haven't heard you on here before. So you mm. and I have this unique you you started doing it. And mm -hmm. I'm sure it came about because I was questioning whether or not somebody was dead on the podcast at some point. And so you started doing this thing where you would text me the, the word, hey, insert name here, exclamation mark, whenever anybody of any note died. And I have learned so many people died by getting a text message from you and seeing the name and being like, oh, and then I go and Google it. And sure enough, there it is, you know. So, yeah. you know, I'm like, uh, speaking of black widows, I'm kind of like the black widow. Dude, you know? you're, if you get a message like that, it's, you know, I like to say you're more of my Paul Revere. You come running and you're like, Hey, instead of the red coats are coming, you're like, Hey, you know, this person just died. And, and that's mm. how I know. But anyway, whatever I'm, yeah. I'm trying to pump you up here. But anyway, I wanted to bring you on so we could review and reflect upon those that have passed in 2023 you know, give a little re refresher for everybody listening as to maybe some of the people that we've lost, but then yeah. probably more fun because, well, not fun for the people that we're going to name off, but more fun for you and me. I want to do our 2024 death pool predictions. I'm uh, I'm all aboard. Um, okay. We should, we should kind of keep track of this and see how right we are. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that we should do. Yes. So... So um, let's first let's first start with reviewing 2023. I don't have any like super special music or anything like that to I was play here. Say so. You need it in memorandum, you like know. The, uh, Oscars. I know. Well, they always forget somebody, and I'm sure we will too. But we're not going mm -hmm. over everybody. But 2023 kicked off January 1st with um, rapper Gangsta Boo who was 43 and and Earth Wind and Fire drummer Fred White who was 67. I I probably if I would have come across that news I probably would have not have given you a hey those those barely cover celebrity status. Like. I can guarantee you if you were to dig back through text messages I texted you about Fred White. I mean, I do like Earth, Wind, and Fire. I, mean, I was, I know for a fact that I was crushing you the beginning part of this year. Yes, you, you, uh, you were Johnny on the spot with I the with the dead people. Came out of the gate strong for 2023. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you've caught back up, but this was this was a better year for for parody. The you know in previous year you 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 dominated, but this year you you you. you I, I think I stepped my game up in 2023. Well, and it sounds like I have competition now because it sounds like your dad beats me too. Oh, yeah. My dad loves the fact that you and I do this. And so now he's okay. gotten in on the facts. So whenever yeah. I get one from you, I forward it to him and vice versa. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's it's, it's a, uh, a, a text message obituary. It yeah. truly – well, it's a message chain. Exactly. You know, you got to mm. spread the love. Um, so going from there – um, yeah, he was not the, um, I don't know that one either. Uh, I don't know that one either. Wow, we had some, I mean, I don't want to call them duds, because that sounds like it would be, you yeah. know, that, that's just disrespectful. Uh, Jeff Beck, guitarist, Jeff Beck. Okay. He died on yeah. Jan January 10th at, uh, 78 after contracting bacterial meningitis. I vaguely remember that one. Yep, yep. He was uh, named one of uh, the five greatest guitars ever by Rolling Stone magazine. So, 
Jeff Beck. Um, then going forward, ba -ba 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 -ba, you know, some of these I just don't recognize. Yeah, see, um, that's that's kind of the criteria I use to like. Do I need to explain? Like, you're pretty good. You're pretty like, you know, knowledgeable. Of, you know, the past and stuff. So yeah, general. It's like if I have to explain this, you know, like, am I gonna, you know, if it's too obscure, generally I won't send it. You know. Yeah. Uh, this guy, this Charles Kimbra, he was, uh, he played Jim Dial on Murphy Brown. He died yeah, January. I would not, I would, yeah. I would, yeah. That's a good example. I I'll would be, not have. I don't remember sending that one to you, so that one yeah. flew under the radar. Um, now we got Robbie Bachman, the drummer of Bachman Turner Overdrive. He died January 12th at age 69. So, you know. A lot, of, a lot of musicians, early part of the year. Oh, here we go. Here's a big one. January 12th, we had Lisa Marie Presley. Mm, gosh. You know, that's that's good that we're recapping because, like, if you were just to ask me, I would think she would have died years ago. Like that, yep, You know nope, what I mean? Nope. January 12th, and it was suspected cardiac arrest. So she was 54. So, mm. yep. Yeah. I mean, fairly young. Dayton, uh, Michael Jackson will do that to you. Ah, it will. It will. Now, then on January 13th, Robbie Knievel, son of Evil Knievel, he died after a battle with pancreatic cancer at age 60. Okay. I would have thought that a Knievel would have died in a fiery wreck, but... Evidently... More, more uh, yeah. It's kind of like when Erwin passed away from a stingray, you know? Yeah, it's like that just that doesn't, doesn't seem like the way it should have gone. Um... Mm -hmm. You know, here's one that I don't think you and I texted back and forth. And to be honest, if I say his name, you're probably going to be like, who? But um, he actually was pretty good. Al Brown, he uh, played Commissioner Stan v Valchek on HBO's The Wire. He was the police yeah, commissioner. See, I never watched The Wire. So oh, really? Dude, you got to watch The Wire. I've heard, I've heard good things. Yeah. It, I, the last season... They could have done without. I feel like that was kind of a little cash grab. Um, but all the way up until... Eh, I'm not going to say it because that's kind of a spoiler. But the 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 all the seasons except the last one, I feel, were totally worth it. Yeah. And generally speaking, HBO doesn't make duds. No. Speaking. And to be honest, if you're already that far into the show, just watch the last season and be done with it and say mm -hmm. you watched it. So... Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, it was a guy from McHale's Navy. That was like not us there. Um, don't know him. Yeah. Oh, here we go. January eighteenth, David Crosby of Crosby Stills Crosby and Nash. Nash yeah. Eighty one. Eighty one. Which, you know, again. If you'd asked me, I'd have thought he died way earlier. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, this is this is nice to review and reflect here. Shirley of Laverne and Shirley, Cindy Williams, she died okay. uh, January 25th at 75 years old. So you know, there's that. Um, mm -hmm. I sent you this list. Do you want to like go through some of these, or are you going through it as we go? Um, I I prefer to hear your voice. Oh, okay, okay. All right. It's more soothing. We don't have Pinky to narrate, so we don't. No. Uh, Lindsay Loring, or I'm sorry, Lisa Loring, she played Wednesday Adams in the Adams Family sitcom. She died January 28th from a stroke caused by smoking and high blood pressure, according to her agent and friends. Um, well, she certainly wasn't smoking cigars. No, no, she was not. She'd have been very relaxed and enjoying. Yes, yeah. And still alive, probably. Yeah, probably. Um, huh. Uh, I don't know this one. Yeah, I don't know that one. She was young. She was only 45. Um, dude, that's a fashion designer guy. A magician on America's Got Talent. Yeah, that. Oh, here we go. Burt Bacharach. He uh, okay. died February 8th at age 94. Uh, beloved hits of Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head and A Walk on mm -hmm. By. So, mm -hmm. you know, he got to... He wrote, he wrote a lot of songs. Burt Beckerack. Um, doop doop doo Who else do we have here? I don't know. Um, let me do one more, and then maybe you and I can start doing... 
we'll kind of intermix our predictions and just, ah, here we go. This is what we'll stop with, and then we'll go into our predictions for a little bit, and then we'll come back to, you know, 2023. All right? Sounds like a plan, Stan. So on February 15th, 2023, we lost Raquel Welsh at age 82. Yeah, she was a she was a looker. Yes, she she was indeed a looker, and uh, yeah, many many men had uh, had posters on the wall back in the day. But uh, yeah, they certainly did. Yeah, before so, my time. Oh yes. Oh, you know what? I'm going to finish out February because there's not too much more here. Uh, so February nineteenth, Richard Belzer, uh, so, comedian yeah. and actor. Known as Munch uh, in Law and Order and Homicide Life on the Street, because that's where he started as Munch. That character started on Homicide, and that's an underrated show right there. Is Homicide Life on the Street? Yeah, that's a good show. I don't know if you've ever seen that or not. I'm definitely familiar with that character, but I don't know if it's from that particular yeah. show. Okay. Um, Jansen Panettiere. The I guess his sister is Hayden Penitieri. Um, oh, he was only twenty eight. Died February nineteenth from an enlarged heart. Um, so a little a little Hayden Penitieri. Uh, she a very small girl. I yeah, know, she, she's got to be Christ save five the, two something like that. Save the cheerleader, save the world. Right. Uh huh. She was married for a, a pretty significant amount of time to the heavyweight champion world at the time, Vladimir Klitschko. And Vladimir Klitschko stands about 6'6", oh 250. Oh, God. Yeah, just a hulk of a man. He looks like he was chiseled out oh of like stone. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. I'm, and I always thought that poor girl. Yeah, I'm imagining what you're throwing out there, and that's, that's oh, my. Yeah, and, and so he was a heavyweight champion of the world. Large man, spoke like five languages, you know. Yeah. And I'm just thinking, when they broke up, he broke up with her, first of all, to focus on boxing. And I'm just thinking, like, that poor bastard that's got to follow Vladimir Klitschko, like, mm -hmm. you know, like your ex. Who was your ex? Oh, he was heavily champion of the world, spoke five languages, 6'6". Six, six, yeah. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And, and yeah. just, oh, God. I, there's so many ways I could go, but I'm going to try to keep this. Like I'm gonna keep this PG thirteen ish. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna not go full on R and start describing what I'm thinking. Um, yeah. uh, February twenty seventh at age ninety three, we lost a guy that I don't know if you would know. His name is and I'm I'm probably gonna butcher his first name. It's R Riku R I C O U R I C O U. Yes, R Riku R R Riku. I don't know Riku Browning. Okay. Uh, now, this guy, he donned the Gill Man suit and did the underwater sequences in Creature from the Black Lagoon. Okay, obscure. Pretty I know. Obscure. He, But he also worked extensively in marine coordination for television and film, often directing underwater sequences, including th scenes in Thunderball, Never Say Never, and Caddyshack. He also was the creative force behind Flipper, both the movie and the TV series, directing 37 episodes of the TV show and co-writing the film. Hmm. So, right. there you go. We have Riku Browning. Okay, so that takes us through February. So, why don't we now go ahead and uh, throw out a few 2024 predictions. Okay? okay. So You want me to go first, or you have a list, or well, what do you want to do? I, 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 I have a list, but I also okay. think that you know, we'll we'll go back and forth, but I think before we even get into the list, is it safe to say that Jimmy Carter is top of your list? I did not want to address the uh, Georgia peanut farmer in the room, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if he gets through this podcast, I'll be surprised. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, if 2023 doesn't <laughs> claim him first, Jimmy Carter is top of my list for 2024. His I mean, God bless the man. He's had he's been in hospice for a while. He's had brain cancer for years. He's like what ninety nine. <laughs> yes, I mean, you know, and he just lost. He just lost. He just lost his, his wife, wife. You know, and <laughs> they've been married forever. And there's so many jokes that I could make, but I'm gonna let him go because, by God, you know, he just well, lost his wife, and he's nice. That's, and... That, see, that's why you have me in the podcast. <sighs> I was thinking. 
the thought had it occur in his head as he's laying be- dead in uh, in bed next to his wife, he's got to think to himself like, "I won," you know. <laughs> See, I was going to go the opposite way. I was going to be like, he's too dumb to know what hospice is for. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm going to get better. It's like, no, that's not what this is for, Jimmy. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's like, at, uh, least, at least Rosalind under, no, God, I got to stop. I got to stop. Uh, well, <laughs> usually when somebody's married a long time, their spouse goes. Yeah. It's they're so fine. And couple that with all the other stuff. I mean, yeah, the 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 Grim Reapers got to be knocking at the door. Oh, like. yeah, they're, they're hanging out I mean, together at this point. It's just yeah. it's truly a matter of time. So yeah, I don't mean to be grim and wish ill on That's a man, but kind of exactly it, the point of this episode, though, is you and I are totally <laughs> calling out who we think is going to bite yeah, okay, it this well, year. I'm fine. I, I I take back that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So so okay. So we've established that Jimmy Carter is top of our list. So now we can go forth into hopefully divergent territory. I mean, you know, let's there's some that probably are going to coordinate, but but why don't you go first? What's your, what's your first prediction aside from Jimmy oh, Carter? First prediction God. for 2024. Okay. Um so naturally you want to go and with I, eggs. And I also right? want to I also want to point out we're not necessarily calling it in order in sequence of death. Like we're just saying that over the course of the next 12 months this is a, but like it could be the last one we name could be the first right. one gone. It, it still counts. I'm not saying yeah. that. Okay. Okay. And these aren't necessarily people you want to die. We're just no. I, I don't know. Yeah. There's a lot of people on my list that I actually really like. There's one guy on my list that I could totally see dead and I'd be okay with. But uh, mm-hmm. otherwise, no. There's a lot of people on my list that I don't want to die. That's fair. Okay. I just I I just thought we'd you know yeah throw the disclaimer out. No, I that think that I think that's good. I think that's good. So okay. Sorry. And also, uh, if these people die, we are in no way responsible. Mm-hmm. Throw mm-hmm. out there as well. So. I'm I'm gonna have to make sure I keep my alibis nice and straight. But yes, yeah. exactly. We don't want, we don't want another Bob Saget. Incident. Nope, nope. Incident. We don't want another Bob Saget incident. So yes, okay. So with all that okay. being said, let's go. Yes. What's your first one? I right. I'm gonna come out the gate, and I think if he does go. It will probably be at the later end of the year, but just age-wise, Dick Van Dyke. Oh, my God. He's literally the first one after Jimmy Carter on my list. Okay. All right. He's... He seems in relatively good health, he, and he's a- active and all that, but he what, is, he's 97? Yeah, he's old, and, and yeah. the last time I saw him, like, yeah, he he's, he's up there. He's up there. So, I think you're right. I think age is going to just naturally catch up to him at some point. I mean, and it's father time undefeated, right? Yeah. So, okay. So, my next, my first one, uh, aside from Jimmy Carter, is... Um, you know, it, it, along those same lines, it's uh, um, uh, Gene Hackman. Okay. Because he's pretty up there, too, man. I mean, he's, what, 90, mm-hmm. I think he'll be 94 next year? Okay. And he hasn't done anything in a while. Oh, no, he retired quite a while back. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm going Gene Hackman. Okay, well... I'll uh I'll see your Gene Hackman and okay. I will raise you uh Clint Eastwood. Mm. Also on my list, a little further down, but you know what? I believe they're very s- close in age. Yeah, and and different from Hackman, Eastwood very active. Yes, Eastwood yes, is he very is very active. active, and that might keep him going for a little while longer. You know, that's the thing but, we we don't know genetics in these families. Mm-hmm. And he did say that this last movie he's working on will be his last. Okay. So okay, maybe that's what gets him. I don't know. All right. Well, I'll see your Clint Eastwood, and I will raise you, Tim Curry. Oh, good call. Not not not, not a particularly elderly man, but been no, sick for years. but he's been sick, and uh, yeah. and I would hate to see him go because I mean, dude, it's Tim Curry, but All right. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I would not. I, I would not have predicted that. And like, he's one of those that, like, you kind of think, like, oh, is he still alive? Like, you kind of just 
I he, when he, I was putting my list together, I was like, "Is he? Is he not?" And then I looked, and he's he's kicking. Yeah, because so. it's like, I think what helps is like if they're not in the public eye, we yeah. kind of forget about them, and we you know, because the last image I saw of him, you know, he looked really ill, and I just kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, you want to go? Uh, let's go one more round here, and okay. then we'll and then we'll get back to uh, unless 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 we're like scraping your list already. I don't know how many you've got on your list here. Oh, I'm just spitballing here. I, I can oh, probably okay. go for a while. Um, okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's go. Mel Brooks for the win. Oh, he is not on my list. Okay. All right. All right. You know, I would hate to see that too, but no, uh, he, another one. He's but yeah, in, I mean, yeah, in, age is going to catch up to him at some point. So, yeah, um, and I do believe he's active. Was uh, he did that? I think he was involved in that Hulu. Yeah, that uh, history, uh, history, history of the world of part two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, so and that helps. I think I think having stuff going on in your life, you know that that Purpose, helps, right? helps a lot. You know, helps a lot. Yes. Now, okay. I'm going to I'm going to take the layup here. Okay. And it's going to make me sad cuz like there's some like legit movies that this guy's been in that it's like are 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 big favorites. Mhm. But I'm going to go Bruce Willis. Oh, you know, with the dementia. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I mean, from what I was reading recently, like he's not like verbal anymore. Okay. So like yeah, he's he's yeah. Bruce Willis. I'm going to go Bruce Willis. So, I don't know the validity of this, but I heard this. Um, I heard, like, he, like when he first got dying, like, they found out that he had dementia because he was, like, fucking got? his na- It's some form of dementia, I'm pretty sure. Hang on. Before we go down this road too okay. far, I want to make sure uh, what he's got. Ah, uh, you're right. Frontal fr- frontotemporal dementia. Yeah. Um yeah, you're right. So. And I believe, and again, this could be just like a, a fairy tale or something, or I might be butchering this, but I believe his family first found out when uh he had dementia because he would like have sex with people and like lose all his money at the casino and stuff. Oh shit. And I'm thinking, it's like a get out of jail free card, right? Like, you know, I'm, yeah, that's <laughs> what it. the fuck? It's the dementia. Like, uh, I, can't <laughs> I didn't know I was betting on black. I can't remember these <laughs> <Holy laughs> shit, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Backing up with the neighbor. Nah. Oh my! Oh my! Oh oh! Yeah! Yeah! No! No! Um. Wow. Okay. Um, so Dark, no, <laughs> going uh, back, going, going back to, uh, who we lost in 2023. Let's, uh, kick off March <laughs> with Tom Sizemore actor at, oh, yeah. uh, age 61 had a brain aneurysm. He had a rough life. He had a yeah. rough life. Tom Sizemore. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of drugs there. Yeah. He, uh, uh, had a 2003 domestic violence conviction over, uh, involving fiance Heidi Fleiss. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, he had a lot going on. Um, then, don't know who that is. Don't know who that is. Um, Gary Rossington. He's a guitarist, and he was the last surviving original member of Leonard Skinner. Died March fifth at age seventy one. So, okay. all of Leonard, the original Leonard Skinner, is now gone. I- I was going to say, he outlived a lot of those other people, you know, yeah, with the yeah. whole plane crash and everything. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, there was a lot of them that went way quicker. Um, mm. Doop-a-doo. Man, there's a lot of people I do not recognize. Um, taking this list from uh, Entertainment Weekly, by the way, for anyone who's interested in seeing the full list of what I'm looking at here. But, uh, yeah, some of these, I'm just like... Don't know who this is. Um, ah, Lance Reddick. He's an actor. He was on The Wire, Fringe, uh, Resident Evil, Bosch. He was in John Wick and all of its se- and its sequels. 
Oh, was he the thin black Ooh. dude? Okay, okay. Yeah. That's what I thought it was. Uh, his first major TV role came in the prison drama Oz in 2000, and then he went on to play a uh, Baltimore police officer in The Wire. Um, he was also in Godzilla vs. Kong and a couple other things, but he died March 17th of natural causes. He was 60 years old. So oh, I would have guessed a lot older. Yeah, he doesn't, I mean, he doesn't even look 60, to be honest, but, you know. I guess maybe in, like, my mind, like... I just picture him older just because he was so, like, stoic. Like, yeah. I'm thinking of his role in, like, John Wick. You know, he yeah. just seemed kind of Morgan Freeman-esque. Ish. Yeah. 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 I could see that. Um, Boy, there's a lot of just nobodies here. Um, da, 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 Eldest son of Andrew Lloyd Webber, Nick, Nick Lloyd Webber. Died March 25th. That ain't a he. That ain't a he. He was 43. Um, Darcel the 15th is the Guinness Book World Record holding drag icon. And known as the oldest working drag queen. Died Mar in March at the age of 92. Um, so you got that going on. No. Um, do, 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 do. Boy, yeah, it's uh, all of a sudden just kind of. Yeah. You know, I, I probably should have screened this list before I got onto the show, just well, to like, you know, pull. Uh, I mean, show, show prep is for the birds, really. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, I'm just saying. Um, what else we got? Chuck Morris, a percussionist. April 9th. Oh, I thought, April 9th. I, I thought you said Chuck Norris. I was like, no, he didn't. No, play. no, Chuck, not Chuck Norris. Al Jaffe. He was the award-winning and record-breaking cartoonist for Mad Magazine. He died April 10th from multiple organ failure. He was 102 years old. Jaffe, who worked for Mad Magazine for 65 years, was the creator of the Mad Fold-In. Um. Do you know that when he got his fatal diagnosis, what he said? What? What, me weary? <laughs> See, I like that. That's good. That's that's good material. He retired, by the way, in 2020 at the age of 99. So, well, honestly, I, I, there's something to be, and then that's when he died, you know. There's, there's something to be said about being active, I think. Oh, totally. Totally. Um, Who else do we have here? I mean, that's a K-pop person. I don't even know who that is. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling old here. Oh, uh, Ginny Newhart, wife of comedian Bob Newhart for 60 years, died April 23rd at their home in Los Angeles following a long illness. Um, um what I'm, what I'm wondering, yeah, is what does it take to get on this entertainment weekly list? Hmm. That's like a good question. Instance, like, for instance, okay, if you were had like a guest appearance on an episode of Man vs. Food or something, I did indeed. Actually, would so you does be that on the mean, entertainment list? Boy, if I'm not, I'm going to feel really disappointed <laughs> now that you point that out. <laughs> Bel beloved c cigar uh, podcaster host. and yeah, one uh, one time uh, interviewee on Man vs. Food, yeah. Free, frequent uh, Vegas transvestite. <laughs> wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. That's how rumors get started. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, so on April 25th, at age 96, we lost Harry Belafonte. Okay, now here, now here we're getting some. Uh, That's a legitimate letters. one right yeah. there, right? And I remember, I remember that text. Yep. And, and a lot of a lot of a lot of those again, like it's like, oh, was he still alive, sort of thing? You uh -huh, know, you just uh -huh. kind of forget about him. And not to get too off topic here, but with some of these, it's almost like, uh, are you familiar with the Mandela effect? Yes, I talked about that. Yes, yeah. oh yeah. So it's, is it like, did I imagine Harry Belafonte dying, or you know, did that happen, or? No, no, that legit happened on April 25th. And then, then, two days later, on April 27th, at age 79, we lost Jerry Springer. 
Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They lost Jerry Springer. So, you know. Um And you could've you could have I mean, I don't know what his what brought him down, but like The mayor thing? You know, he could have what's that? The mayor thing? What do you mean? No, oh, like, oh, he's dead. Died. Oh, how he died. Oh, uh, mm. b- 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 you know, it doesn't say. Some of these it says, but this one it doesn't say. Because, like, he, you know, like, he was still good in that show we've talked about, Baggage. That's a oh, quick, yeah. You know. And that's not that old. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. No, he got brought down as a mayor because he wrote a city check to a hooker. Well, who hasn't done that? Well, I mean, you try to not write a check to the hooker, and you definitely don't write it off the city bank account if you're the mayor. Does this take you back to your uh, gig in politics? I didn't have access to the checking account. Did you advise people like, hey, don't do this, don't buy a hooker? I think Jerry Springer was a good example for everyone not to follow. That's valid. Yeah, That's valid. I think I think it was. Now, prior, may, there might have been checks flying to hookers prior to him, but, you know, whatever. So, um, yeah. Now, on April 28th, you had guitarist and vocalist Tim Bachman die of cancer. He co-founded the Canadian rock band Bachman Turner Overdrive. Shout out to Luke. Well, but that's two members of Bachman Turner Overdrive that we lost in 2023. Yeah, not a not a good year for the not Bachman a good, Turner Overdrive. Not a good year for Bachman Turner Overdrive. And then... Then another shout out to Luke. We uh, on May first in a Toronto hospital at age eighty four, we lost Gordon Lightfoot. Mm, okay, you know, and I remember my Instagram feed when that went down. Holy crap, mm-hmm. man! Everybody I know that was even remotely Canadian was in big time mourning at that point. I mean, that was like a it, big... I guess I guess I didn't realize the impact he had on the, our neighbors up north. Oh my god. The wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald sundown, like there was a there's a lot of songs that were getting played at the beginning of May. So, oh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace, there. Rest in peace, Gordon Lightfoot. Um, now we're getting into some not so great ones. Uh, this guy played AC Slater's dad on Saved by the Bell. <laughs> 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 well, well, golly! Gerald Castillo died May fourth at age ninety. Played AC Slater's dad. Uh, <clears throat> since I mentioned him, I feel like I probably should actually mention him. Um, I mean, the, the sick part about that is I I remember that character. Like I, I'm like really I I can visualize him. I mean, I was born in eighty four, so that's uh, prime safe by the bell growing up. Okay, okay. I don't know this one. There's like one called. His name is Jack Rebney, and he was a foul-mouthed RV pitch man who became the Internet's first viral personalities and was profiled in the 2009 documentary Winnebago Man. Died May 10th at age 93. Yeah, that's lost. Yeah. Lost on me. I don't, I don't know that one. Um, Don't know that one. Veteran actor. See. Um, don't know that one. Don't know that one. Um, a lot of soap opera actors. Yeah. I oh, here's one. Here's one that we can touch on. Okay. Uh, May 18th at age 87, Jim Brown, legendary fullback for the Cleveland mm-hmm. Browns. Yes, uh, I remember, I remember texting you that one. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what's funny, he came up later in the year as I was watching Secrets of the Playboy Mansion or Secrets of Playboy, and they talked about how he was uh, sexually assaulting and raping women in the grotto. <laughs> well, that uh, was that's in the same episode that they talk about Bill Cosby. So, you yeah, know, like, yeah, those yeah. poor ladies, Jim Brown, very imposing figure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like, well, I'd say, uh, say, there you go, Jim Brown. You got that. Um, uh, Andy Rourke, bassist of the Smiths, died May 19th at age 59. Um, we'll do a little bit more and then we'll go back to our predictions here. I don't know who that guy is. Uh, Ray Stevenson, Irish actor, played Volstagg oh. in the Thor movies, played Punisher. One, Punisher. one of the Punisher movies, exactly. Mm-hmm. He was also in, um, 
Oh, he was also in uh, some Star Wars stuff and uh, whatever else. He uh, he passed away May twenty first at age fifty eight. So yeah, yeah. yep, yep. Uh, and then we got Tina Turner on May twenty fourth at age eighty three. See, that's another one. Like I, I just like she, I would have thought died years ago. Mm-hmm. Like, that doesn't. Mm hmm. It's one that I'm like, oh yeah, I know she was dead, but I kind of yeah, forgot funny, that yeah. she died this year. So, yeah, no. Tina, same, same sentiment. Tina Turner, May 24th at age 83. Um, do, do, do. The, the fact that Ike didn't take her down is a blessing. No shit, right? No. I mean, there was there was there was a lot of opportunity for that to happen, but it didn't. Mm-hmm. It didn't, and that's good. That's good. Um. All right. Well, why don't we now go ahead and uh, switch over to our um, predictions as I scroll through the list to find the first one I want to do in um, June. Well, let let us interject. Okay. About the cigar. About the cigar. You know that, how's it treating you? That's a good point. Um, I'm about halfway through it, and so I'm probably I have a second one of these locked and loaded and on deck. So more than likely, I'm going to go ahead and get into it at some point, but. Dude, this is super smooth and easy. My burn line mm-hmm. is like really, really tight. My smoke production's been great. My draw on it's been great. Some nice um, kind of cocoa-y flavors and, and earthiness sorry, off the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, nah, it, it. I mean, fantastic cigar. Yeah, and and for the price point, I mean, you can't beat it. No, They're very affordable. I know. I I for the I don't understand. I how more companies can't do what um, Nick Melillo over there at Charter Oak has done, or Foundation has done with the Charter Oak line, you know, because mm-hmm. he's got his core, his, you know, the, the tabernacle and the wise man and the, mm-hmm. and all those. But, dude, he has given a really, really great um, affordable, I don't want to call it budget. I want to call it affordable mm-hmm. line of cigars yeah. with Charter Oak that, that, it's just they're great cigars and they're not five dollar cigars but they're like six dollar cigars six seven dollar mm. cigars you know yeah i think i want to i want to say i paid yeah under seven for the toro right and for i mean no pun intended but the way his company has it just has a great foundation like it's got uh price points to appeal for everybody it like you were saying it really I mean, does and yeah, i mean i think when i buy a key. When I buy a box of those Habano Toros, it's like 95 bucks. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's hard to... It's downright impossible these days to get a box of something that smokes as good as these cigars for under 100 bucks. Yeah, I mean, we're talking here, you know, we're not nursing it, and it's, you know, no. maintaining that burn, the flavor. It, 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 it performs much higher than a... Six seven no. There's a reason that the Habano version of this is one of my go to driving cigars. Plain and simple. Mm. Um yeah. and I will admit that this is I think only my second experience with the Maduro version. So oh, cool. um this is this has been really enjoyable. I've been really digging it. Cause yeah, I don't um, know what you're drinking, but it, I'm drinking I just coffee. Have water. I, I, really, yeah. I just have water Fair. out here. It pairs really good with coffee. I've done it many times. I'm doing it currently, so there you go. I could see that. Mm-hmm. Those cocoa dots really come out well. Okay. So you want to go Where first on this round? Okay, sure. Um, actually, you uh, you kind of when you're doing the who we lost in 2023, you kind of gave me an idea. Uh, Bob Newhart. Oh, Bob Newhart. yeah. You know what? We lost we lost his wife, but he's he's up there. Is he still around? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Bob Newhart's still alive. I mean, we haven't gotten through all of 2023 lists, but I don't remember seeing you a Bob Boy, Newhart. I don't remember seeing that either, but I'm going to bring up another uh, another tab here real quick and see. Boy, you're right, and you know what? He is 94 years old. He, he was born in 1929. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. No, that's a good I, pick. That's a good pick. That's a, that's a good pick. It's a super good pick. Um, my first... Do you think when he dies, it's just going to be like a... A dream. Uh, a dream. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to... They're going to get together and it's going to be... You know, this is 
uh, I'm I'm Saint Peter. This is my brother Daryl. My other brother Daryl. <laughs> <Anna. laughs> oh God! Uh, you know, that, that, that's almost too good to for you know. I God's got to have a sense of humor, right? You would think. I mean, come yeah. on, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so my first one uh, for this round, I'm gonna go. <sighs> Boy, I want to leave those ones for later because those ones are kind of my my out there black sheep um mm. i'm gonna go with one that i also named uh earlier and it's bill cosby yeah the years have not been kind he's the one on my list that to be honest i don't care if he were no. to if he were to pass away it's it's what it is um yeah you know the, I'm with you the other ones i feel bad putting it out there in the universe but you know whatever it is what it is bill cosby yeah you know what i think i think the world would be all right. I don't think we need Bill Cosby anymore. I mean, I, I, I don't want to say that he's not molesting anymore, but I'm pretty sure he's not molesting anymore. So no, I would yeah, think he, not. But he, uh, yeah, he's, but he should have never gotten out of prison. I think it's bullshit that they let him out early. That's yeah, that's that, that's key. Yeah. That's that's bullshit. So yes. Okay, so who who do you have right. up next? Uh, who do I got? Um, who do I got? Let's see here. I probably am going to be wrong on this one, but like Keith Richards, I mean. Oh, yeah, but dude, I, I think he's, he's been on the list for like a yeah. new, like number of years, and he never does. So that's it. So, yeah. I mean, I, okay. like I said, he'll, he'll probably outlive it, but. Probably, you know. probably. Now, you threw out a rocker, I'll throw out a rocker, and I'll say Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, yeah. That one's probably a lot more likely. I mean, dude, he's just, he's, he's like Rock Yoda, you know, he's just like this yeah. little old man at this point. And he's not, I don't think he's nearly as old either. That's the thing. Again, hard life. Very yeah. hard life. Very hard yeah. life. He's got some street miles on that face. You uh-huh. Know? Uh-huh. Um, all right. We'll do one more and then we'll go back to 23. Okay. Um, like, okay. Uh, <laughs> Like I, does it, do you think the Secret Service listens to this podcast? <laughs> you went. You're about to go where I was afraid to go. Yeah. Well, I might have. I might have spiked my coffee with some vodka. So you well, are about to go where I was afraid to go. Yeah. At the very least. At the very least, if our president, uh, dude, it might be a very it, stressful campaign for him. You don't know. At the very, at the very least, if he doesn't die, his presidency is gonna die. So, like, <laughs> either hate Joe Biden or hate Joe Biden. So, I, I, you know, okay, we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, and uh, you know, I know I don't want to knock on my yeah, door. No, and that's the thing for any Secret Service who may be listening. We're not saying we're gonna do anything. We're just. Put it out there as a possible prediction. So, yes, nothing, nothing. Let, uh, let's go with Liza Minnelli. Is she still alive? You know, I feel like she's dead. Boy, I feel like she's dead. you know what? Now you've got me questioning it. And you uh, pull up your fifth tab. Like I much. am seventy-seven years old, my friend. Born in nineteen forty-six, oh, wow. she is indeed still alive. Okay, well, good pick. So good pick. I would say I didn't think she was dead. So I'm going. I'm okay. going Liza Minnelli, um, but uh, yeah, I had to move us off yours quick. So um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's the that's <laughs> probably <laughs> probably for the best. Um, so uh, June seventh at age eighty one, we lost probably one of the greatest Twitter accounts that there is, and that's okay. the Iron Sheik. Oh yes. Dude, okay, so yes, just everything you said, yes. Yes! Like, if like, like if nobody has ever if you I don't care if you're a wrestling fan or not. No. If you go and check out the Iron Sheik's Twitter account, he spent every day basically just going on there and just fucking this and fucking that and yeah. I'll just what and it's just like you know calling people out and like you're a fucking donkey and just like what I mean just oh my god it was the greatest thing ever it was exactly what would, I feel like Twitter was used for or should be used for now I, I, I don't know for this but if 
if he wasn't on fucking cameo, that is a missed opportunity. Oh my god, yes. I would have paid good money to get a cameo from the Iron Sheik. Fuck you, Nick Miller. And yes. Fuck Hulk Hogan. <laughs> and fuck Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best clips, oh also, if, if the listeners want to uh, YouTube where he was on Howard Stern. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes, I know exactly what you're going to say. Yeah, yes. That is, cla- that is classic. Oh, it was the best. Um, so, yeah, we lost the Iron Sheik on June 7th. Um, now, here's another one. This one this one was kind of important for my college days, actually, believe it or not. On June eighth, at age ninety three, we lost Pat Robertson of the seven hundred club. Oh, sure, sure. My grandma watched that a lot. I Dude, remember that. Have I I've I've I know I had to have told my Pat Robertson seven hundred club story on this show before. Well, if you if you have, I mean if you have it's not ringing a bell. Maybe if you want to so like a, a created version. When I was in college I had rabbit ears on my TV and I and depending upon which way the antennas were going, uh I got two channels at a time. So if it was one way I got like PBS and I think like CBS and then pivot the other way I got like Fox and Channel F- and, and NBC. You know, and um so I'm home midday on a weekday I'm flipping, I'm, I'm on, you know, looking at my TV, trying to find something to watch. And it's like soap opera, soap opera. Just, it's crap. It's crap. You know, infomercial. And then I found what I thought was the news and it's like a news package. They're talking about some war or some shit like that and whatever. And, you know, it comes back to the anchor and the anchors like giving information about this news package. And then all of a sudden he's like, and Pat, what's your opinion on this? And it pivots to this old guy, and this old guy just starts like, "Well, let me tell you about this," and starts giving his freaking opinion about this news package I just watched. And I'm like, "Why are we letting this old guy just like pontificate about the news?" And then it goes back mm-hmm. to the anchor, and they do another news story, and you know, whatever it comes out, it looks just like something you'd see on like CNN or Fox or whatever. And then it pivots to this old guy again, and he's giving his opinion. And then all of a sudden. After the news portion is over, it's this old guy and this dumpy looking moronic younger version of the old guy and this woman. And I'm like, who are these two people with this old guy? And they're just talking. And then they start talking about Jesus and this and whatever. And I'm like, what am I watching? And then I figured out it was the 700 Club. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'd never seen it before. I didn't have any clue of what this was. And I'm watching this and I'm like, why are we asking this old dude his opinion about the news? And yeah, it was the 700 Club. So, yeah. why is he asking for money? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it was like it was CBN. So they had this logo in the bottom that looked like a news logo and it was like CBN and I'm like what is CBN I'm like I'm in journalism school for god's sakes I don't even know what CBN is like what is this you know like I've heard of CNN and all these mm. other I don't know what CBN is is this a new new news network and everything no nah, it's Christian broadcasting network so uh, I'm just trying to picture you're just the utter per- perplexity on your face oh I was so <laughs> so confused so confused yeah. um all right, so going to give a shout-out to my fellow nerds for a moment. And on June 12th, at age 93, we lost John Romita Sr. John Romita Sr. was a Marvel Comics artist who went on a just historic run of The Amazing Spider-Man following uh, the departure of co-creator, Spider-Man co-creator Steve Ditko back in the day. And uh, tip- I would go so far as to say that for the longest time, if you saw any product with a picture of spider-man on it like t-shirt under ruse t- uh, toothbrushes whatever it was he he drew that so that's spider-man so um yeah there's and, probably four people out there that got that reference so. you know a, that's okay i'm gonna throw it's it's, it's my show it's damn it i'm gonna throw it out there so it's an educational podcast it is you know what you learned something there's a guy named john ramita senior and his his son john ramita jr currently draws but uh yeah um but we're going to go with that. Um, and then... I don't know. I mean, there's so many people that I just do not know. Uh, Milton Powell, rapper known as Big Pokey, died on June 18th at age 45. I, I, um, I loved his earlier stuff. You know? <laughs> I mean... 
<laughs> Back when he was little pokey, that one it, it was when he was the best. But yeah, um, oh god, we just yeah. Uh, Teresa Taylor, former Butthole Surfers drummer, uh, and she died at age sixty after a battle with lung disease. I just wanted to say Butthole Surfers. Um, I mean, you often don't get the opportunity. No, not nearly as frequently as you would think you would. Um, do do do. Oh my gosh, there are so many people that I just do not. A lot of soap opera stars. I I keep saying that, but like, it's true. If, um, if you held it, if you held the gun to my head and say it said like name anybody from a soap opera ever. Yeah, I'm like, what's 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 her name? Uh, oh, what the fuck was her name? Yeah, see, you can't even do it when you're just it, saying. Yeah, it. yeah, the one chick that was in all of them. Uh, I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, Alan Arkin. <laughs> Uh, he died oh, at age yeah. 89. Um, when did he die? It doesn't even say when he died in this little obituary thing. Um, well, it would have been either end of June, beginning of July, one or the other. Uh, Sue Johansson, the beloved Canadian sex educator, uh, she died at age 93. Oh, dude. Sex talk with Sue. <laughs> That's in. exactly it. Talk sex with Sue Johansson. Dude, if, if you get a... <laughs> I, I don't want to segue into the villager segment, but <laughs> like, if okay, all right, time. no, 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 here. <laughs> it's time for the villager cigars entertainment report, brought to you by villager. Villager cigars, one of the leading cigar and cigarello manufacturers in the world, founded in 1888 and still family owned and operated. Head over to villagercigars.com and check the store locator to find a shop near you that carries them. We guarantee that Villager Cigars will be a wonderful addition to your humidor and cigar rotation. All right, let's talk sex with Sue Johansson. <laughs> Shout out to Luke. <laughs> exactly. This is Canadian sex talk, no yeah, less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're going to be doing nasty stuff to one another, but they're going to be apologizing the whole time they're doing it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't have lube, but I, I do have this maple syrup. <laughs> you put it in my butthole. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh. Oh so, yeah, to the listeners, you know, if you have a YouTube, if you have a Rumble, Sex Talk with Sue, um, kind of similar to uh, your, uh, well, not similar at all, but uh, I, I, it's similar in the confusion. I remember I was flipping through the channels one day years ago. I was like, what is this old lady fucking playing with a dildo on TV? <laughs> And like that's not I, similar I mean, at all. I had an old man giving his opinion about the news, and you're talking about an old lady playing with a dildo. Well, similar in like how confused I was that this was on TV. I like, think I would have been a lot more confused if Pat Robertson were like you know playing with butt beads or something. Yeah, no. So she's talking about, and then they would get like people to call in. No, I tell you what. That would have been a good Jerry Pulaski right there, I think. Oh, my opportunity. God. She, she, she would have got uh, some. But, yeah, it was it, it was fucking phenomenal. You know, has Jerry yeah. Pulaski ever considered calling into C-SPAN? I don't know if he has or not. Boy, that would be some funny shit right there. <laughs> I, I think they – my guess is they probably uh, filter calls more than the cigar pulpit does. So. You know, you'd say that, but there's plenty of videos out there where people have gotten through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but anyway, um, all right. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, sex talk with Sue. I <laughs> I have not watched it recently, but for, for the listeners um, out there, but as long as we're on the villager segment, uh, yeah. What um, else have you been watching? Okay, so um, now of course the name escapes me now, but uh, I watched a documentary. I think I texted you this uh, a while ago. Oh, you know, did, but I so. don't want to. I'm like on like 8,000 tabs in my phone. I don't want to. No, no. Yeah. Uh, So on Max, there is a documentary called, um, gosh, you did text me this the other day. Love, love is no, love has one. That's what it's called. Love has one. And I'm a busy guy. Like I don't have time to binge watch much. Like the only thing I've ever binge watched was tiger King. Okay. Okay. I binge watched this thing. Now it's all, it's only three episodes. They're like hour long. I I was like, whatever I need to do today, it, fuck it. Like I'm watching this thing. <laughs> and it just it's three episodes. It's an hour long each. One bleeds into the other, and it just it's you're just enthralled, much like Tiger King. And 
I don't want to give any spoilers, but it's about a cult. Okay. And when I say that, it's the cultiest cult I've ever, like, not to go down a rabbit hole, but, like, you know, like, you, you generally, not to sound like a psycho, but, like, with a cult leader, like, I, I think of, like, David Koresh and the Branch Davidians, right? Like, yeah. obviously, obviously, he's psychotic. Obviously, like, I don't follow that, but, like, part of you is like, okay, well, like, I could kind of see why people fall into this, like... Yeah, make there's some, some level some of, like, things. charisma that they bring to the oh, table. Yes, exactly. Yes. So, yeah, so he's he's charismatic, and, like, his message had some, like, good points. I was like, okay, I could kind of see the allure, right? This shit, I don't, like, this makes Heaven's Gate seem, like, normal, okay? Oh, God. This is the cultiest call, like... I'm just like I'm watching it in disbelief, and like I'm thinking like, who? What's crazier, the the, the cult leader, or the people that follow this? Yeah, you know, because it's like, how in God's name could you be so delusional? But uh, again, I don't want to spoil anything. But it, to any of the listeners, yourself included, love has won. Thank me later. All right, like I will check that tomorrow. out. Uh, speaking of cult-related documentaries. Um, I don't want to get too far into it because to be honest, I, I watched it, um, tangently. I was doing other stuff. Um, my, everybody drink. My lady friend was watching it <laughs> and I was working while she was watching it and I got engrossed as like later into it, but it's, it's on Netflix. I don't even know the name of it, but it's about twin flames, twin flames. That's what it's, I think that's what it's called actually. Whoa, whoa, wait, the, you're talking about twin flame. This that's what this is about too. Yours? No, that's you. You said the name. Was oh, Eka. okay, the okay, name yeah, yeah, yeah. Twin flames, dude. Yeah. Also fucked up, like yeah, yeah. kind of culty, yeah. and it's based kind of like on the idea of like it'd be like if you mix a dating site with a cult. Mm-hmm. Is kind of the whole kind of yeah. the whole point of that one, and that was that was fucked up too. Um, no, this weekend I had my kid. So it was a lot of time as the tank engine. However, however, prior to sitting down to record with uh, with you, Noah, I discovered and binged about six episodes worth of Red Green on Amazon Prime. Oh God, that takes that takes me back. Love like, that show. Yes, days. Love uh, that also, show. Also, correct me if I'm wrong. Canadian. Very Canadian, very Canadian. Yeah, Luke. And Luke. Uh, you know, if she can't find you handsome, at least she can find you handy. That's right. Yeah, yep. I mean, dude, and I'm telling you, I'm watching this, and I'm like, I love this show. Why, why, why did I just now discover this is on Amazon? This is great. There's like 15 oh. seasons of this on Amazon. Oh, dude. no, there's yeah, a... it was on PBS all the time. You yeah, know? I'm like, this is great. I love this show. So yeah, so I, I've got a whole lot of red green to uh, to binge watch through. So anyway, well, do you have anything else for the Villager Cigars? Entertainment? Yeah. Um... So I talked to you briefly about this, but another shout out to Luke. Uh, Nathan <laughs> Fielder. We should have just okay? had Luke on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Nathan Fielder. Um, the listener probably is one of those guys where like the name probably doesn't sound familiar, but if you saw him, you'd know who he is. Yeah. And he's a Canadian. He's a Canadian uh, comedian. And he, if you've ever heard of a show called Nathan for you, they did multiple seasons. I want to say it was on Comedy Central. Yeah. And then he had, I can't, I can't think of the name of the show, but it premiered last year. And it's like, he does these elaborate, like, oh God, I can't, the name escapes him. Yet, like, it's a really clever show where he would do, like, he would do go through all these, like, uh, like, this guy wanted to apply for a job. So, like, he would go through all these elaborate things that are, like, recreating, like, the environment he would have to go into. You know, he'd, like, create these elaborate sets and stuff to simulate. And uh, the name escapes me. It's it's on uh, Max. But anyway, okay. I say that to say this. He's got this new show on Showtime, I believe, okay. called um, The Curse. So I started watching it because, again, it's Nathan Fielder. But it's not a comedy. I don't know what it's listed as, but it's certainly not funny. Like, I certainly uh, haven't laughed, really, like I would normal stuff. It's got Emma yeah. Stone in it. Oh, okay. And, 
so it i've only watched i think they have like six episodes out i've only watched like three but it's very it's different it's i'm not sure if i like it yet or not but i i keep i'm keep being drawn to it um i don't even know how to describe it but uh if you like nathan fielder it's it's worth it's worth a shot uh there's a scene i don't want to give it anything away um uh right in the first episode that's very disturbing but um yeah, if you get nothing else to do, check out the curse. I think I think you might like it. I don't know. Okay, that's what I've been watching. Well, all right then. I'm not familiar with it, but you know, I do know Nathan for you. So yes, yes. yeah, I yeah. do know if that. You, if you like Nathan, it's it's that same it's that same like just dryness, you know. Oh, it's just, yeah, his is super dry, almost mm. awkward at, uh, in a lot of those episodes. Well, yeah, the, the, this this show is yeah. extremely awkward. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Well, here we go. Well, you want to jump back into 2023? Well, I I, I don't see why not. I mean, why not? <laughs> you know. So we'll start off July. On July 5th at age 76, we had George Tickner. He's a co-founding member of the original rhythm and was the original rhythm guitarist of Journey. Okay. So, you know, we had him. Uh, another soap opera star, Andrea Evans. Uh, she played... Uh, Tina Lord on One Life to Live. Um, okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Josephine Chaplin, actress and daughter of Charlie Chaplin, died July thirteenth at seventy four years old. Um, did, she, did she did she have the Hitler mustache too? She did not have, okay. have the mustache, and one could argue that Hitler had the Chaplin mustache, but. Uh, I yeah, th- I, uh, I think I, I don't think that's much of an argument. I think yeah. Hitler kind of ruined it at that point. Yeah, so, yeah. That, you know. it is a very. I've often thought about that. If it wasn't for Hitler, like, yeah, would that be a style nowadays? I oh god, I hope I'm. I don't know. Mustaches are apparently making a comeback of some sort. I don't know. Not that one though. No, not that one. I don't <laughs> think that one. No, 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 um, no, not that one. Uh, Tony Bennett. July 21st at oh, uh, yeah. age 96. That one hurt me. That one hurt me. Yeah, and he I saw he, him I saw him in concert and I remember seeing him in concert. Oh gosh. This probably would have been 15 years ago. Okay. And he was at a casino near me and I was like, "Oh, we better we better, you know, go see him while we still can, you know." Well, yeah. And and he went on performing like 15 more years, you know. Well, he died at age 96 following a battle with Alzheimer's. So, I, I hope he remembered where he left his heart. Uh, <laughs> San Francisco. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, I don't know who that one is. Broadway actress. Um, yeah, um, there's a lot of that. A screenwriter. Ah, Sinead O'Connor. July 26th at age 56. Yes. Ripping the picture of the Pope, you know. Yeah, Catholic Church definitely got her. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Here's a, here's a you know, deep cut. We have uh, Mark Gilpin. He's a former child actor who played Sean Brody in Jaws 2. He j- died July 29th at age 56. Of a shark attack? Uh, doesn't... Uh, no, it was a long battle of gl- glioblastoma and aggressive brain tumor. That was my next guess. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then July 30th at age 70, we lost Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman. Oh, yes. 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 So uh, we lost Pee Wee Herman. And then uh, I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. Mark Margolis. He was uh, Tio Salamanca on Breaking Bad. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah he yeah, died yeah. August 3rd at age 83. Um, so He was so good in that role. Oh, dude, I know. He was also in Scarface, Oz, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, American Horror Story, Asylum, and Breaking Bad, and then Better Call Saul. So. Um, now he had a very if, if if any of the listeners are familiar with Breaking Bad he had a very violent death. Uh, he did in that show. I'm I'm hoping he in real life did not die. So I don't believe uh, says a short illness. 
So I'm going to assume that it was not by explosion. explosion. Yes. Um, Although yes. that would be a really short illness. It would be. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, doesn't give a date for this one, but John Gosling, former keyboardist for the Kinks, died at age 75. Mm -hmm. um, doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. Don't know who that guy is. William Friedkin, the director of French Connection and The Exorcist, died on August 7th at age 87. Okay, yeah. Yep. He directed a couple of things. Mm -hmm. um, do -ba -do. Oh. You okay? Yep, I'm just adjusting. Oh, okay. Uh, DJ Casper, Chicago musician who uh, created the Cha-Cha Slide, died on August 7th. He was 58. He by, died after a seven-year battle with cancer. Cha-Cha Slide. Yeah, Cha-Cha Slide. I mean, you know, <laughs> don't really... There's a joke there. There's a joke there. Probably I, you somewhere. know, I know. I'm like, you know, whatever. Um, hmm. Ah, here's more Canadian musicians. Robbie Robertson, uh, former frontman of the band, died August 9th. He was 80 years old. So, more Canadian this is not a good year for Canadian musicians. No. Um, Johnny Hardwick, comedian and voice actor, best known for his performance as Dale Gribble on King of the Hill. He died, uh, but, but doesn't give any sort of date or age. Um, but yeah, Dale Gribble, um, he passed away. And he was set to reprise the character in the upcoming Hulu reboot. But uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen now. I'd watch it if he did. I think they got some lines recorded, but I don't know. Obviously, I don't think they got all. So, because uh, then the actor strikes and all that kind of kicked in. So, more than likely, yeah. probably not. Um, yeah, they're gonna. Have, but between him and uh, um, Tom Petty, and then uh, oh, who's the girl? Played the niece who was married, to, the niece that married Tom Petty's character. You know who I'm Probably. talking about. I can't think of a name. Oh my God, she was in Clueless. Oh, Silver, not Silverstone. No, it was a friend. Um, oh, Murphy, Brittany Murphy. Brittany Murphy. Yes, she passed away too. So they've got like three people on that show that you know they obviously. Uh, have to figure out how to what to do with, but I heard that with the reboot of that, they're aging everybody up, so it'll be about like Bobby and like his family and you know like mm. and everybody, so it'll be appropriately timeline aged. Fair enough. So I figure that'll be interesting. Anyway, it's a little side side deviation there. Um, uh, oh, br breaking news! Oh God. Did Jimmy, Jimmy Carter, Carter die? No, he didn't. Jimmy Carter no, I'm just kidding. Oh fuck! I was like, I was like, no way, no. I'm like, dude, no. We have to cut some of the horrible jokes. Oh my god. Um, we have. Uh, oh god, I don't know any of these people. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna. How about we go into some predictions for 2024 now while I flip, right. flip ahead and look for some other people that passed away in 23 that I actually recognize. So um, who's your first one on this uh, this prediction set? Okay. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the age, but he's got to be up there. But I saw him recently in something, and he looked not well. Um, okay. Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas. Mm. Yeah, good good call. Uh, uh, I don't know how old have, he is, but you're right. He, he does have genetics on his side because his dad lived to be like like 102 or something. Yeah, but see, didn't Michael Douglas get the cancer from you know going down on women? That's right. Yeah, the the pussy cancer. Yeah, yeah he got the he got the you know the oral sex cancer thing going on there. But w was it from going down on? Uh, Catherine Zeta Jones. I think he just blamed it on going down on women in general. I don't think he specifically said Catherine Zeta Jones. Because I mean, I don't know. I might take that. I mean, let's be. <laughs> there are bullets that you're willing to dodge, and there's bullets yeah. you're willing to take. You know, so I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're shaving off some years on the back end. I mean, that, yeah, I mean, that's not yeah. Well, speaking of guys that I haven't that that 
you know, maybe don't look that great these days, that whatever. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm going to say Michael J. Fox. Ah, yeah, you took that one from me. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. going to say Michael yeah, J. Fox. He's, he's battled the Parkinson's for quite a while. And, I, yeah, like you said, he uh, does not look good. And I, I, I read something recently where he doesn't think he is going to live. Like he, he said it in his own words that he's not gonna, he doesn't think he's going to live very long. Oh, really? Yeah, that so sucks. that's a good pick. That's that a good pick. Yeah, that, 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 that's a tough one. I always that, like it. That does. All right, next one up for you. Oh gosh. Um And if you what? ever this... and if you're getting to the point where you're having to like struggle, I mean I've still got more on my list here, so you can No, no, you know, I, I I got I, I was thinking uh and this this one will hit this one will hit pretty hard if it happens. Uh and this is might be obscure for some of the listeners, but Oh um, god. Dominic Chinese. Oh, Uncle Junior. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it, that even took me a split second, but I, but oh, you're right. Because I he mean, might, yeah, he, he was old in the show. He's be in his nineties. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Boy, so, so many other people from that show have gone before him too. Before I am, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could see that. That'd be sad. He, mm-hmm. uh, I, I'll tell you, he was. Easily one of my top favorite characters on that show. Certainly, like his was, lines, dude. He's so funny. Yeah, his so line, like, funny. You know, and there's a couple of listeners too that have, do have done this, but me and you also have watched that show multiple times. And there's I was, always there's always like a line like, "Oh, I you know I don't remember hearing this," or like uh, it would just catch you. Certainly, dude, yeah, I was so. just telling Gervais on the last episode that he and I did that it's getting to be about that time of the year that I start and do my annual uh, Sopranos run through. I, I think yeah. I, I or semi annual. I don't do it every year, but I think I need to do it again here soon. It, so it never disappoints. No, it's just fantastic. And once you start, you're just like, "Meh, I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna do it." You know. What's your favorite season? Would you say? Oh, that's tough. That's mm-hmm. really, really tough. Um, I have a soft spot in my heart for season one, but I'm probably mm-hmm. gonna go with season two because with the culmination with Big Pussy on the boat, yeah, dude, that just rips you some up. Good, there's some good episodes in that. Yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. Seasons, I, 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 seasons one, two, three, and the back half of six are spectacular. Four, five, and the front half of six are still better than I'd say probably most TV out there. Not quite as good in my opinion as one, two, three, and the back half of six, but still super, super good. I would pretty much agree with your list, although, like, I think Ralph Cifaretto is such a good villain. Mm. Yeah. The episode that. when he beat the shit and killed the hook or uh, stripper. Mm-hmm, exactly. I mean, dude, I wanted to see Ralph Cipperetto just yeah. get just annihilated after that yeah. episode. So the seasons with him was at season yeah. four or something. So that, I'll probably put that in my top. Yeah, I I could see that. Song. I could see that. Yeah. Um. Okay. So my next one. This one's also going to kind of hurt. Because I feel like it's going to leave a void in the world. But uh, Ric Flair. Oh, yeah. I, think the na- I saw some. I think the Nature Boy. Yeah, that's that's valid. I saw some recent videos of him. Didn't he get, like, in a fucking fight or something? Oh, dude, he's, he's like, hanging out with, like, what's the non-WWE one? Um, the other big, big promotion. Uh, he's hanging out with Sting over in the other promotion. Oh. Okay. Uh, Cause Sting is, I guess, getting ready to retire, which that right there also blows my mind. Cause Sting has got to be like fucking near seventy at this point. Yeah, you know, like I, I guess a lot like some of these deaths we were talking about. I assumed he was already long retired. No, oh, no, he's retired now. And I guess like Ric Flair is like hanging out with him for this retirement run. So like, <laughs> yeah, I, like, I, don't... I saw this on Instagram. Like he fought like a, a dude like at a bar or something. It's possible. Yeah. It's so, the, it's the nature boy. I could totally see him yeah. just deciding to get into a fight. So Yeah, no, I I think that yeah, this is a, yeah, that's a good that's a good pick because okay. yeah, he lived he lived a hard life as well. A lot of drinking. Oh, dude, a lot of everything. You know. Just just a quick segue here. Uh 
have you? I don't know if I sent you this, but like, have you seen Brock Lesnar's daughter? Mm. Yeah, she looks like him. She looks just like Brock Lesnar. <laughs> yeah, you can't deny those genetics. Yeah, and she's she's got <laughs> some like, was she like into shot put or something? Something like that. Yeah, she's yeah. a college uh. shot put or track and field <laughs> yeah. thing. It's like holy that, shit, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. that's a that's a big girl right there. Good yeah, for her. That'd be, but... a, that'd be a hell of a man that could hate that. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, let's go another round because I still have okay. what? I still have what? One, two, three, four, five, six. I still got seven on my list here. Okay. Um, let's see here. Um, I mean, I had said Keith Richards earlier. Yeah. For, for the rock and roll. Um... I guess go Mick Jagger too. I mean, they're about the same age. They are. I mean, and they lived, lived a very hard life. You're, pi- of, you're picking on the Stones. You don't think any of the Beatles are going to bite it? Um, still I mean, got they, still got Ringo and uh, Paul hanging out there. I think I like. Obviously, they did drugs, but I don't think they did quite the amount of drugs. Nah, it doesn't uh, seem like it. Did. No, yeah. they seem quite a bit softer. Um, but it, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, if old McCartney uh, died there. Okay. But, yeah, I'm going to go. And, I, I, again, I, I'm a huge Stones fan. I don't want to see Mick Jagger die. But, no. Or Keith Richards, for that matter. But it's got to catch up to you eventually, all the all that uh, drugs and activity. So, so uh, I'm going to go with Dustin Hoffman. Okay. Because he's, like, in his 80s. And you don't really see anything out of Dustin Hoffman these days anymore. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna I'm just gonna put it out there. I'm gonna say Dustin Hoffman. Yeah, because he's yeah he's in his 80s, but uh, unlike Pacino and unlike De Niro, he's not fathering children. No, so that must no, mean, that must mean he's old. He is not having any more kids. You're right. So, mm. <laughs> all right, let's do one more round. We'll get back to 23, burn through some 23, and then we'll we'll close out 24. Okay. Um, I got to go Harrison Ford. Um, oh, I know that's unpopular. Han Solo. But I watched. Indy. The, I watched the new Indiana Jones movie. I have not yet. It's on Disney Plus and it's on my list, yeah. but I haven't watched okay. it yet. It's, it's actually not bad. And I say that because the only reason this movie was created is to get the taste of Crystal Skull out of you know your mouth. Right. I'm, I'm okay with that. Yes, and it did that. Crystal Skull was like the Rocky Five of Indiana Jones. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so much better than Crystal Skull. Uh, quality wise, I would put it right up there with Last Crusade. Okay, really? Um, so, so I mean, because Last too Crusade, much, but... I think, is like it's it on any given day. Last Crusade could very well like. I don't think it's ever going to beat Raiders, but it's going to at least tie Raiders. Yeah, I mean, it's a, for me, it's a distant third. Um, oh, you you're gonna tell me you're gonna tell me the Temple of Doom is better than Last Crusade? Unpopular opinion. Very gonna, unpopular. Going to get a lot of hate for this, but Temple of Doom is my favorite. Temple of Doom is the movie that made it okay to call little Asian boys short round, and that's probably why it's my favorite. <laughs> but, but, I, I don't like, think that's right. Anyway, <laughs> Kalima, yeah. Kalima. Yeah, <laughs> what was it? I that? saw a meme. It was like last Christmas. I gave you my heart. You held it up and said Kalima and caught it on fire. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> that's awesome. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> Holy um, shit! So yeah, it's 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 it, it's worth seeing. But the reason I say Harrison Ford is because a lot of that movie was AI to make mm-hmm. him look younger, and then they showed him. And he looks his age. And his age, I, I had to look it up, was was in his 80s. I want to say he's 81. Yeah, he's in his 80s. But, I mean, dude, yeah. I've seen, I remember seeing him doing interviews for that and everything. And he still seemed really sharp. Um. Well, I don't know what to tell you. I, I'm... I mean, <laughs> hey, it's your prediction. I, yeah, You I'm know, probably, I mean, like, it is what it know. is. I mean, yeah. So. I mean. Okay. It's, you know, it, it's, you know, okay. it's like the. 50th draft here but uh, well that's true we are <laughs> we're getting down on the list although i have saved some deep cuts for the end okay here, okay uh, well, like, let's get, well let's you go and then we'll do 2023 20, and then uh and then we'll get to the we'll, deep cuts here to, to the deep cuts here. all right i'm gonna go with one that's that's 
relatively, it's kind of a given. Um, but uh, we got Shannon Doherty, who's battling okay. breast cancer, stage four breast cancer. I so, think now that you say that, I I think I did hear that. Um, so yeah, that's yeah. Stage, yeah. Uh, there is no stage five. Yeah, for a, yeah. For us, yeah. I'm, as a, for a Sopranos reference, there is no stage five. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say Shannon Doherty is my uh, is is my pick there. And uh, let me let uh, Entertainment Weekly refresh here. Okay, going back to 2023. On August 23rd, at age 79, we lost uh, Terry Funk, who is a professional wrestler. He was uh, uh, the king of hardcore, or uh, one of the kings of hardcore. He and Mick Foley uh, made hardcore wrestling a big deal. So, I believe I watched um, what's that show called on um, the Reels or whatever the. Uh, Dark Side of the Ring. Love that show. Yep. Yeah, I watched I watched the Terry Funk one of him. That was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Well, and speaking of wrestling, on August twenty fourth at age thirty six, they lost uh, WWE lost Windham Rotunda, uh, better known as his ring name of Bray Wyatt. Um, he's a much more recent wrestler. I didn't really I didn't watch him, but but you know we're talking wrestling, and he was literally the next one up. Um. Bernie Ma- Marsden, uh, rock and blues guitarist who rose to fame with the metal band White Snake. He died on August 24th at age 72. Then uh, Arlene Sorkin, who was a uh, voice actress best known for originating the role of Harley Quinn. She died uh, August 24th at age 67. So she was the... Voice of Harley Quinn in the Batman animated series. Then we had Bob Barker, who died on August 26th at age 99. And on that day, many, many dogs and cats that had their balls and, uh, you know, whatever, breathed a little sigh of relief because he wasn't out there advocating to spay and neuter anybody anymore. Um, not not, uh, not to uh, tarnish the name of Bob Barker. Oh, but God. I... So close to 100 without going over. I mean, how perfect is that? <laughs> it's true. It's true. Mm-hmm. He came so close. Oh, Lord. That, you know, that's just one of those jokes that just kind of like... Writes yeah, itself. Kind of does. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I do question how these guys get in on this list. Because, like, here's one. He, he was an assistant director who worked on the Harry Potter movies. You know, it's like really how how does an assistant director on the Harry Potter movies end up on this list? But uh, it must, have, must have been a slow news day, I guess. Jack Sonny, the musician and writer, best known as the other guitarist in Dire Straits, uh, died on August thirtieth at age sixty-eight. Um, another person. This one's from Dallas. Jimmy Buffett, Mister Margaritaville, mm. died September first at age seventy-six. Um, you know, there's a man that had to have sold the soul of the devil. Yeah, because like, he did the same song over and I, and you know what? I'm gonna catch a lot of shit from Travis at the Smoking Butts and Tapping Ash podcast because he's a big Buffett mm-hmm. guy, dude. Jimmy Buffett had like five songs. They all sounded the same. He made his career off those songs, and yeah, like, wh- wh- come on, you know? I mean. Cheeseburger in paradise? Exactly. You made a fucking song about a cheeseburger. About a cheeseburger. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. But fucking fucking middle-aged women loved him. They did. Dude, they were all drunk. They didn't know what the fuck they were doing. It was an easy song to sing when you were drunk. Yeah, that's basically, you know... Um, So Steve Harwell, founding member and former frontman of Smash Mouth... Died September fourth at fifty six. Yes, that uh, that one uh, caught me off guard. Uh, yeah. yeah, I had a joke there. What the fuck was it? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, something about walking on the sun or all no. star. Uh, yeah, I forget. Them. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> Gary Wright, musician best known for his hit songs Love is Alive and Dreamweaver, died on September 4th at age 80. Um, and then Charlie Robison, country singer-songwriter best known for his top 40 hit I Want You Bad, 
Died September 10th at age 59. Um, uh, whatever. Um, another soap opera guy. Um, man, just a lot of these. Folk singer. Um, don't know that one. Don't know that one. Don't know that one. Man, I'm telling you, for those of you who want to, like, see this full list, you know, you can, but it's it's on yeah, Entertainment yeah. Weekly. David yeah, McCallum, uh, Scottish actor, known for his role in NCIS. He was the nerdy guy with the bow tie. He died at age 90 on September yeah, what was 25th. His name? What was the character name? Like, Duck or something? Ducky. Right? Ducky. 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 He was a uh, medical examiner. Yeah, I'm looking at this. I didn't watch it, but uh, but you're right. You're right. Uh, Michael Gambon, he was a, uh, British actor, played Dumbledore in the Harry Potter flicks. He died September 28th at age 82. He took over the role of Dumbledore, uh, after Richard Harris passed away. Um, and, uh, yeah, he died. Um, Dick Butkus, Mm -hmm. linebacker for the Chicago Bears. Became a fixture in films, TV, and commercials. Died October fifth at age eighty. So does does Dick Buckus have a place in the hearts of Illinoisans like uh, Gordon Lightfoot does with Canadians? Um, you know, here's the thing. Maybe up in Chicago, Illinois mm-hmm. is one of these weird states where you get to about the halfway point. Um, sports tend to diversify, so you get you get about halfway up the state. Or the the top half of the state, Cubs, Sox, Bears, you know, Bulls, that kind of thing. You go southern mm-hmm. half of the state, it tends to be Cardinal country in terms of baseball, you know, um, football. It's kind of all over the place. I mean, dude, I'll be honest. Geographically, I'm closer to Indianapolis and Kansas City than I am to Chicago. So, like, yeah. you know, it's since, always a big state. People don't realize. No, that. they don't. And so, since the Rams left St. Louis, I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, when I watch football, it's it's probably the Chiefs that I would care more most about, you know, just because whatever. But that that's who St. Louis seemingly has kind of adopted since that went down. Yeah. But yeah, it's I kind of uh, have a similar issue. I'm not a big football guy, but where yeah. I am in Wisconsin, everybody assumes Packers, but. We're much closer to the um, Twin Cities yeah. uh, than we are than we are um, Green Bay. So there's uh, a lot of Viking fans and also a lot of Packer fans. So a lot of fights is what you're telling me. Well, uh, a lot of bar fights going the, on. You guys the, the, just the drunkest, drunkest state in the world. So <laughs> I know that's why I was saying it's like you guys getting yeah, the, bar fights thrown down. There's always, yeah, there's always uh, an excuse to fight there. Nice. Uh, on October 8th, the world lost Burt Young. He played Pauly in uh, Rocky, yes. in the Rocky that movies. And as long as we're talking about the Sopranos, also uh, Bobby Bacala's dad. He was, indeed. He was 83 years old. So and he, He's one of those guys that always looked fucking old. So, Dude, like, I know. I'm looking at a picture of him from Rocky back in 1976, and he looked old. And it's like, yeah, so. but, you know, to your point, he was pro- just everywhere, man. I mean, he had 160 film and television credits to his name when he passed. Mm-hmm. So, and then also he was in the theater a lot. Um, He directed Texas Chainsaw 3. I don't really care so much about that. Mark Goddard, actor known in a, as his role as Major Don West in the 1960s sci-fi show Lost in Space, died October 10th at age 87. So you got Mark Goddard there. Um, Phyllis Coates, she was the first actress to play Lois Lane on television. She died October 11th at age 96. Um, okay. She played opposite of George Reeves in the film 1951 film Superman and the Mole Man. So, you know, you got that one. Um, and chick with a soap opera, more whatever. Um, uh, whatever. Um, Suzanne Summers. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was one day shy of her 77th birthday. And so she passed away on October 15th. Um, Fucking size for days. 
right? She had, she was the thigh master, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, she was. Um, yep. So Suzanne Summers, and then I uh, don't know her. I don't, who, uh, I don't know him. Um, Mark Howard James, the hip hop producer and DJ, better known as the Forty Five King, died October nineteenth at age sixty two. He rose to prominence in 1987 with the song The 900 Number and uh, produced portions of All Hail the Queen, the debut album from Queen Latifah. Well, well so, you know, somebody, so, so, y'all learned something today. You know, you can say that. Richard Roundtree, um, best known for playing John Shaft, passed away on October 24th at age 81. Dude, there's one right there that, to be honest, I thought he'd already passed. Yeah, Richard Roundtree. Yeah, you know, you know, society is so like, what have you done for me lately? And if, oh, we haven't, you know, you just if you, if you don't see him, you, you're just assuming. Uh, I decide you know, out of mind. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Well, and another one, Richard Mall died on October 26th at age 80. He played bull on Night Court. Mm-hmm. So I remember texting you that one. Yep. We, it was a bad time for the. Uh, for the uh, the for the Richards there, um, mm. and then here we go. You knew he was going to be on the list, buddy. On October twenty eighth at age fifty four, Matthew Perry. Oh yeah, that was that long ago already, huh? Right, exactly. It was over a month ago now that Chandler died. Yeah, I remember you texting me. I was like, no way. But if uh, if you ever watch, what was the? It was like Dateline or something like that. He had. In an interview there, and holy shit, <laughs> that man had a life, dude. He, the amount oh, yeah. he would drink. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he did his body's no favor, did his body no favors. No. And, uh, oh, God, what did I do? Oh, no. Did you just retro hail? No, I just got out of the list, and now I'm having to, like, go back in and find where I was at. I like somehow or another hit the back button on the browser. So, mm-hmm. and I had it up in the uh, screen reader view so that I could uh, not have the ads and shit all over the screen. So, hang on. I got to scroll down to, because there, because the nice thing about this list, the one nice thing I will say about this list is they, um, they were nice enough to put this in chronological order starting at the yes. bottom. So, That's like, true. if you just scrolled all the way to the bottom, you were at the beginning of the year. So, it's which means they probably have had this post running for a year now. And, uh, you know, they just add to it every time something happens. I was so, say they had to update it recently here. They, cause, yeah. Because they, they took a, the last couple of weeks, well, I don't want to spoil it, but they would have had, they taken the people from my 2024 predictions here. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, who else we had? It's another general hospital. Um, man, another another soap opera person. Uh, child actor. Um, I don't know that one either. Um, boy, we're hitting a- after Chandler. It got a little, 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 little generic here. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, I'm burning through it here. So we're, we're going to, we're definitely going to finish up George Funky Brown, the longtime drummer and co-founding member of the genre blending band Cool in the Gang died November 15th after a battle of cancer at 74 years old. I must have missed that one. I don't remember uh, don't texting remember. you about that. Dex Carvey, mm-hmm. the son and stand-up comedian, or stand-up comedian and son of Dana Carvey, he died on uh, November fifteenth at age thirty-two. That one was sad. It was a suicide, if I remember. Uh, drug overdose, actually. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, Suzanne Shepard. Actress known for playing mothers to iconic mob wives in both Goodfellas and The Sopranos, died in her New York home on November seventeenth at age eighty-nine. Uh, who, who is she? Who is she? She, is she played Carmela's mom. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, De Angelis. Yep. 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 So, 
Uh, she passed away. Um, doop -doop -doop -doop. Uh, the bad guy from Lethal Weapon 2, Joss Ackland. He died November 19th at age 95. I actually, you know, looking at his picture, I do recognize him from some stuff. Um, yeah. He was in a bunch of shit, but he's one of those guys that, like, you just never knew his name. Um, Character actors, you know. Yeah. Mars Williams, saxophonist for the Psychedelic Furs and the Waitresses, died November 20th at age 68. And Marty Croft, from Sid and Marty Croft, they uh, no. did the um, Sid and Marty Croft, H.R. Puffin stuff and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. He died November 25th at age 86. I didn't notice that. I missed that one. Mm -hmm. um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Who else is coming up here? Uh, I don't know that one. Um, this is thrilling, I know. Uh, Denny Lane, co-founder of the Moody Blues and Wings. He died December 5th at age 79. Um... Do, do, do. I don't know that guy. Norman Lear, he passed away yeah. December fifth at age hundred or at one hundred and one. Yeah, that uh, was that's what I was saying. That was that would have been my twenty twenty four. Big big time, dude. I didn't know he was still around when he passed. I I had I didn't realize he was still with us, but I mean he came up with all in the family Jeffersons one day at a time. I mean, just like so many shows, so many shows, so many great shows, Sanford and Son and stuff. And the beauty of those shows, you could not make any of those shows today. Oh no, mm -mm. no, no, not at all. Uh, Ralph Sorella, friend and stylist to Howard Stern, died December fifth at age fifty-eight. Need to touch up my cigar here. I gotta. I was evidently talking weird and. It was starting to go out, and then I got it going again, but the burn line kind of got weird on me. You don't have that. That's my fault. Um, we're near the end of 2023 here. We got uh, um, One Life to Live actress. And then it ends uh, with Ryan O'Neal, um, yeah. who passed away December 8th. He was an actor, and he was 82 years old. And that he would was be the father of Tatum O'Neill. He was the father of Tatum O'Neill. So that's uh, that's where we're at now. That seemed to concentrate heavily on Hollywood. So uh -huh. I'm trying to remember if there were any like other people. Uh, Henry Kissinger passed away this year as well. Oh, that that didn't make the list. Didn't make the Holly the Entertainment Weekly list. Oh, so okay. that's the problem with that list. Is as I've gone through that, I've realized we're only concentrating on like Hollywood with this. This isn't con this isn't getting like other worldly you know people. Um, yeah, because he he was what 101 or something too. Yeah, I think he was 101. So and to be honest, again, yeah. there's another guy that I would have thought if exactly. if, if you oh. and I hadn't gone over people. The la one of the last times you were on, um, and he wouldn't have come up. I wouldn't have realized he was still with us. So, yeah, he was fucking with Nixon for God's sake. Exactly, exactly. And he looked old then. So, yeah. anyway, all right. Well, let's go ahead and close out our twenty twenty four predictions here, and okay. uh, then we can uh, we can wrap this up because we've been going a while. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, As you're I sitting think, out in your car, I feel bad about that, dude. Uh, no, it's all right. Uh, that's what heaters are for. I guess. Um, so, uh, while we were going over this list, I thought of a good one. Okay. Uh, uh, this is probably going to hurt you, but um, I, I got to say Shatner. Oh, fuck. He is 99 or some shit, isn't he? He's in his 90s, yeah. I don't know if he's 99, uh, he, but he's old. He's up there. Yeah. But you know who else? I mean, George Takei is also up there, man. That's, that's what I was thinking, too. Yeah, that segues into Takei. Now, interesting thing about Shatner, uh, one of my favorite shows of all time, probably right behind The Sopranos, is um, Twilight Zone. Yep, yep. And he is about the only person alive from that fucking show, if you, if yeah, you watch Twilight Zone. probably, now that you say that. And, dude, and he did some really good classic episodes. Classic episodes, yep. Yeah. You know? Um, who else from Star Trek's left? There's him, Takei. Is Chekhov uh, still around? 
Uh, that would be more of a Nick Miller question. I, oh, I hang on a second. To the Googles. I got to find that out. That's uh, I know, Walter I, I, Koenig. I know we lost Spock a couple of years ago. We did lose Spock a couple of years ago. Why did that not? Come on, Walter. There we go. Come on. There we go. Um, we did lose Spock a couple of years. No, you know what? Walter Koenig, so check off. He is still around. He's 87. He was born in 1936. Okay. So we have three members of the original br- br- the the bridge crew still around. So, you know, it could be either Kirk, Sulu, or Chekhov that goes. But Did, didn't we recently lose the uh, oh, the blind kick? Yeah, we lost yeah, uh, no, Nichelle uh, Nichols. The first interracial kiss is that correct? Uh huh. Uh huh. First interracial kiss on TV was her and and Bill Shatner. Fucking Norman Lear was probably pissed that he didn't think of that first. <laughs> Probably, we have, he'd have had R.G. Bunker doing it with uh, George yeah. Jefferson, though. So I mean, it would have been a whole thing. <laughs> he would have crossed a lot of lines right there. Yeah. Rob Reiner would have been just like thrilled with it. But yeah. um, mm-hmm. all right. So my my next one up, you know, you you did a spaceman. I'm gonna give you a real life spaceman, and I'm gonna say Jim Lovell. Okay, Jim Lovell. Uh, I I love NASA. Like, I love NASA stuff, and, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. But Jim Lovell, he uh, he piloted uh, the Apollo 8, and he is 95 years old. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Jim Lovell. All right, we'll, we'll continue this astronomy theme here, and I'll give you a rocket, man. Oh! <laughs> not not the Shatner rocket, man, which uh-huh. is the best version. It but, is the uh, best version. Elton John. You're going to go with Elton John. Go with Elton John. Oh, we did. Okay. Okay. You know, I briefly, as a as a counter to that, I briefly had considered Billy Joel, but I was like, eh, I don't know. I don't, I, I, I don't, there was other people that I think, you know, probably first. So I didn't go with Billy Joel, but no, that, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, I, th- I think this is time for the hot takes one. I think we should get the, the, um, the, uh, you know, dark horses here. Oh, that's where I'm at. That's right. Jim Lovell was the start of my dark horse list, man. So how, how the hell is a 95 year old a dark horse? Because who the fuck knows who Jim Lovell is? Yeah, don't give a shit. He's 95. <laughs> that's a dark horse. I mean, it's a deep cut. I'll give you that. Okay. All right. You want another? All right. Dick Vitale. Okay. Boom, baby! Uh, In the ground uh, this year. Uh, Telling you. I mean, that, that, that very well could be. Um, um. All right, let's think outside of the box a little bit. A little, little uh, you know, uh, um, uh, long shots. Um, oh, I've got one I'm super so, long shot. I've got two. Here, well, one's, she's older, but I don't know how unhealthy she is. But anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Here's my long shot. Um. Probably, probably gonna miss that. That so probably it's not gonna happen. But he looks like shit. But he always kind of has looked like shit. Uh, Ron Perlman. Oh, dude, he's just rough. He's not like dying. Dude, you know what? Like fucking. Well, that's why. First of all, that's why it's. A, it's it is a long rough. shot. I'll give you. All right, all right. Second of all, like, is it just me or does fucking like Hellboy look better than Ron Perlman? Like. <laughs> I mean, I remember, he's got a lot of makeup. Like, man, it's true. Yeah, I was I mean, gonna say like they made him up, and it's like Hellboy seems more like attractive than actual Ron Perlman. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah. Oh, here's another one we missed on the EW list: Bobby Knight. Oh, you know, Bobby you know, Knight passed away this year too. I'm surprised he didn't make the list. You know, I kind of am too. Man. Unless you know, Hollywood hates sports, so, so up, maybe they were know, just like, "Yeah, fuck it." Probably but, do. Probably you know, do. So. Although they had fucking Jim Brown on the list, and he's raping That's women true. at the Playboy Mansion, how does how does he make the list? And Bobby Knight doesn't make the list because it's more entertaining to rape women than to throw chairs at people. That's why. All right. Well, I mean, I'm not for me. I'm that's a hot saying. take, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not um, I'm just for a person uh, objector uh, watching that. You know. Camilla Parker Bowles. Okay. Queen of England now. The mistress, okay. the mistress to 
well, now King Charles, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I don't want you to pull up another tab, but is Robert Duvall still alive? Uh, I will pull up another tab because I closed out the EW list. So, Robert, not Goulet. Uh, I almost just started doing Robert Goulet. Uh, he is, and he's 92. Um, so, there's one. There's so one, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good one. That's a, that's a really good one. Uh, Joe Exotic. Oh, he does. He has the cancer. He's he? got the bladder cancer, and I don't think he's treating it. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and say Joe Exotic. Well, I mean, how do you treat bladder cancer in prison? No. I mean, you can, and the government's gonna fucking do it. So like, realistically, if he's gonna have bladder cancer, this is the best time for him to do it because it's gonna be covered by the penal system of whatever the fucking state he's in. Okay, we're sure. trying. You know, uh, another hot take here. Um, again, probably wrong here, but. Uh... Christopher Walken. Oh, he's up there. I'll give you that. He's, a, he's up there. All right. Well, I'm down to my last hot take. I mean, and it's my it's my long shot hot take. Okay. You ready for this? You sitting down? Uh, I am in the car, so yes. Britney Spears. Ooh. I, I that, think, is, that is that is that is now that now that is a dark horse. Britney Spears. I think the conservatives or conservatorship. I think was probably, I know that some people are, I, mm, this is going to be one of those things. It's, I could have some people mad at me about this. I don't know if that was necessarily the worst thing for her. Uh, well, recent videos would suggest uh, that because that one where she's dancing the with the knives. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Just, I'm telling some you. People, some people need a little, uh, a little guidance. Maybe, you know, yeah, and, a little guidance. I think that I mean now right. some people might even say that she's already dead and that we're actually seeing videos of like you know Jamie Lynn Spears like pretending to be her sister and all this. That's the that's the other internet. Yeah, rumor. but but yeah, really, that yeah. that's another podcast in itself. It is. They're, yeah, they're, I'll need Trey Mac for that one. That whole like celebrity like what was it Jamie Foxx was the other one where like they already died. And these are just like people, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Trey Max, the one I need for that, because dude, yeah, that's, it, yeah. He, and I, he and I went down a conspiracy theory the other night about Taylor Swift being like the head of the cult of the or the Church of the Devil or some shit like that. I don't know. It's a whole fucking thing. Anyway, <laughs> and and like, okay. I saw a video and I sent it to him. I'm like, well, here's a new one, and he wrote back, oh no, I've been down this road. And he sent me like a shit ton of stuff and like links to stories and all kinds of things, man. I mean, like, he's got this whole giant plot in his head about how. Taylor Swift is really this other woman who's like the head of the church of Satan or some crap. So anyway, That's... neither here nor there. <laughs> um, I want to listen to that podcast. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't to say that that might be an upcoming episode at some point. But yeah, anyway, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to I'm going to say Britney Spears. I think I think uh, I think Britney's one bad day away from something going bad. Now, that would do if you if you were able to call that, that's that's. That's you know that's that's a that's a good pick. That's a yeah. That's from left field there. That is. I, I mean, that's how I'm closing out my 2024 list. I don't know I, how many more you've got, but that's. Um. Yeah. No. I think it's a good. I think it's a good place to end. It's uh, okay. Yeah, it's, I don't. I don't. I can't think. I'm sure there are plenty of people that we haven't mentioned. Um. Mm-hmm. You know. So they get a pass. They get another year. So. Um, yeah. yeah. You know. But. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say that. So. Uh, well, I don't have the button queued up, but so we'll just talk about my monthly cigars. It's a uh, premium cigar subscription service where you can get a box of cigars sent to your door every month. I get the Robusto box, which is four cigars for $30. They also have the El Presidente, which is eight cigars, two of everything that's in the Robusto box, for 50 bucks. Uh, so it's a good deal. You you spend a little more to get more um, and save more, I guess. But anyway, if you use offer code PULPIT, you get... Uh, Free shipping on your first box, and while you're over there, you want to hit up uh, the fucking good coffee and try that. And um, Nick did a deal 
for the parishioners. I don't remember what the expiration date on that was, but uh, if you feel like knowing, why don't you go back to the episode that I did with Nick uh, last time. It was the last episode prior to this, and uh, if you skip ahead to near the end when we talk about My Monthly Cigars and the the, the, the program and everything like that, you can figure out that deal. I, I know you had to buy a, buy a bag, a 12-ounce bag of pulpit blend and, or daily press and a, a lounge blend and a $10 gift card. And uh, if you use offer code parishioners, and if you do all this on fuckinggoodcoffee.com, so that's the actual coffee site, uh, fahkingcoffee.goodcoffee.com, that got you uh, $10 off. So basically you get the gift card for free. Um, but I don't remember what the deadline on that was. So hopefully it's uh, still going by the time this episode drops. I don't know. I, it should. I don't think he cut it off that early. So... Anyway, mymonthlycigars.com. So, um, anyway, and in terms of the socials, I am on Instagram at uh, The Cigar Pulpit. I'm on Facebook where we have the Pulpit Parishioners group. And, guys, we will be starting to announce the top cigars of 2023 as voted by, uh, nominated and voted by you, the parishioners. That will be coming here soon. Um, Nick posted the... uh, announcement schedule uh on there um hang on let me see if i can find it real quick like uh here it is uh monday december 11th we will be announcing cigars 21 through 25 on the 12th we will have 16 through 20 and it just kind of goes from there but there's a post in the group that announces that so if you're interested in knowing you know if you're the ones you nominated made the made the cut you can start looking for that, and if you're not part of the group and you want to see what the others are recommending, join the group. It's a it's it it's a private group, but I let everybody in. You just have to request access. Um, that kind of helps with the Facebook thing to keep uh, keep them happy with us. But uh, anyway, so that's on Facebook. I'm on Twitter slash X, where I don't really do much. YouTube, where you can watch this, and uh, I don't know. There'll be there'll be announcements about other stuff coming up here soon, eventually. So. Anyway, and uh, Noah, it, it, do you have any socials you wish to share? You don't have to, but yeah. Well, yeah, I uh, I do the Instagram. I'm on there probably too much, as you can attest to all the reels I send you. Um, That's okay. I send but, you a shit ton too. <laughs> yeah, but I'm on uh, Instagram as, at Mr. Lesnick. If you uh, like cigar photos and sink photos, it's uh, a good page to follow. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You just got a fancy new snake tattoo. I did. Yeah. I did. Yes. There you go. Well, dude, this has been fun. Um, yeah, we'll to... a, a, a bit grim, uh, I mean, but yeah, you know, it was fun. It's something to do. Yeah. We'll have to go through and compile the list and actually keep track and see, like, you know, maybe who won the year. Yeah, um, I can't believe you called for the assassination of the president, though. That was that was you. That was a hundred percent you. I want that noted for the record. I went. I quickly pivoted to Liza Minnelli. <laughs> now, in all fairness, yeah. I did kind of say that the Queen of England. Okay, so probably, one, so so I'm gonna have Secret Service. You're gonna have I'm gonna have uh, MI6 uh, coming after yeah. me. <laughs> <Fair enough>. Oops. <laughs> anyway, we're not actually wishing any of these people dead. For the record, for Secret Service that are listening, um, mm. you know, it's just a prediction. It's just a prediction. It's all mm-hmm. fun and games. Anyway, yes. except Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby can die. So, are we, are we adding people we want dead on there? Because I would throw Pete Davidson in there. Oh, crazy. but yeah, I mean, I get that, but he's young. Okay. So, I mean, like, I don't know. But then again, okay. young people die all the time. So, man, eh, whatever. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. He he can be if Britney Spears is my long shot dark horse. Pete Davidson can be your long shot dark horse. Okay, that that would that will come with two exclamation points if I send you a hate. hate Pete you really do hate Pete Davidson. You've been advocating for me to invite Pete Davidson yeah. on the show just so that he, he can yeah. say no. And then Not he a can, Pete Davidson fan. No. You're like, just invite him on so he says no, so that you can kill him. Uh, well, him, <laughs> him and Jake Paul are my. Uh, yeah. Oh God. All right. Well, dude, I really appreciate the time. Oh, it was my pleasure. My pleasure. Sorry about all the people in uh, 2024 that we uh, are uh, predicting death. You know, ho- prove us wrong. I would say, prove us wrong. Be strong. Be strong. And I tell you, 
I tell you what, if Jimmy Carter makes it through 2024, I'm going to eat my own hat. You know, we should have a bet about that, that if he makes it through, yeah. you know, what are, yeah. like, what are we going to do kind of thing? Cause... Science, like Stephen King or science needs to get a hold of them because that's yeah some good genes there, boy. Yeah, something's up with that. It's all the peanuts. Mm. It's all the peanuts and Billy, oh, yeah. and Billy Beer. Or or he is a lizard person or something. Uh, so again, it's, it's uh, probably for Trey Mac again. But, uh, you know. it's maybe. You never know. So, All right, guys. Well, this has been another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm Nick. Uh, this is Noah. Everybody stay safe and stay smoky. You know, I think if Jimmy Carter makes it through this year, I'll donate a hundred bucks to Habitat for Humanity. One dollar for every year. Uh, I'll eat some peanuts or something. There you go. Whatever. Later, guys. See you.